day one is wrapped. So one learning that I had is that I think I'm going to have a little less velocity because I'm also having to document the stuff. And I do want others to be able to copy these templates and use them. That's going to take a little bit more time. So I'm going to take that into account in my planning. I added some stuff into the notion and to Twitter on what I'm working on right now. I think that totally could be automated. For example, when I switch the ticket in the Kanban, that could update a few different sources, but I'll probably do that once I ship one of the first projects so I can be collecting feedback on that project, getting value out of that before I'm optimizing my own ops. And then I think I might have to think about how I'm disseminating the vlog content because the updates could be rather long if they're also tutorials. So they might have some snippets of what I'm building. And then I will edit down a how I built a project video as a separate standalone that I could link into the video. So for this first update, it'll be a bit longer. We also built a little less today because it was day one. There's a lot of setup. That's something I'm going to have to iterate on. If you have any suggestions on that, please do let me know in the comments. And then what have we shipped or done today in terms of like actual product building? So the AI newsletter uh, project, this is the one that takes updates that I'm doing already across Twitter and YouTube and stuff, uses AI to summarize that and sends an update email that is live, or at least the sign up form is live. It's on my Twitter and basically anywhere I'm posting this video, you'll have a link to that. So sign up for that because the more people that sign up for it, the more I'm going to invest into actually building that solution. We'll do that maybe on Wednesday once this profile thingy ships. And then the profile thingy is the profile analyzer. That is where we take a GitHub handle, analyze the profile and give you some insights on that. I was able to check out WeWeb, pretty cool tool front end, a little bit of a learning curve, but I think I've figured out what we need. So current status is we have a front end, it's very shitty, but we have a front end that can accept the GitHub handle on one page. It can open up a results page with a unique URL route and pass a part of that URL route, which is the handle to WeWeb, which was able to create an HTTP request to an NNN workflow. The NNN workflow right now is just sending it back some mock data, but I've got those all linked up right now. And I've got it swapping a static text on that results page to the dynamic mock data that I got back from NNN. So for me, that's WeWeb is validated. I know I'm going to be able to style CSS and stuff on there. The real question was, am I going to be able to get that data from the URL route? And how complicated is it? Because velocity is important. So for me, it's the tool I'll use for that. And since the backend for NNN is established tomorrow, we can focus on building out the backend for the NNN, uh, understand what our data looks like that we'll be sending back to the front end. And from there, skin out the front end and basically have an MVP. So for this GitHub analyzer, what would be great for the next 24 hours is understanding what you think I should add to it. One idea I had is analyzing the GitHub repos that people follow, summarizing each repo, feeding that into a text classifier that spits out an archetype of types of developers. We could even generate some AI cool little game card avatars for that. But what other things could we add there? So a GitHub roast is something that we could have as well. I don't know how much context we're going to be able to pipe in if we can analyze a lot of their code. So next in this video is going to follow a bit more of the in-depth look at what I did today. And we'll catch you tomorrow for day two of the 30 day AI sprint. Okay. So let's have a look at our sprint board. The first thing that I want to do is a AI powered newsletter. Basically each day I'm creating all these artifacts already like tweets. And there's going to be vlogs. Those vlogs can have AI transcripts pretty cheaply these days. What else? In Notion, I could also write a little manual write-up. Basically, there's all these artifacts of text throughout the week. We could pipe into an AI and summarize it. So that's the first thing I want to build because I think it's rather memorable. And I could see this being something that a lot of other folks want to do as well. Maybe with different sources of data, but the template ultimately what we can create is something that basically ingests from various sources to a search source of truth. And then at some period, or again, it could be based on the schedule or through some sort of slash command or something, takes a certain filter of that data, let's say the last seven days, the last X days, or meeting certain criteria, and then summarizes that and sends it somewhere. So we'll do that as an email newsletter, but again, you could swap out the different apps, do something different. In Notion here, and this is on my Twitter, we've got the bit of a description for it. So what this is going to do is it's going to have a sign up to newsletter workflow. That's what we're going to build now. We're going to use the NNN form trigger to do that. We're then going to have a notion database that stores the updates. We have different types of updates. Not sure if this will be useful, but 
more context could be helpful for our, our AI workflow that summarizes it, a workflow that populates this notion database and a workflow that runs every Friday, that ingests the most recent updates for the last six days, and then generates basically an email to send out. A few things I already did, I was setting up this, this is the one project there is, was already setting up a little bit. I've already chosen to use Customize O, and I already just set up the data source. So it's a simple Notion table, and in here I have each update. Notion has to have a name for it, so we're just calling it update. I have the body. This is what I might manually write in here, or is ingested from a source like Twitter, and then the type. Step one of this is setting up the customer AI workspace. So I've done that. So the first step we'll build is the form trigger. This is going to serve a little web form that we can serve right from the workflow. So we don't have to set up something separately. Of course, we could use something like type form, but let's use this to keep it simpler and get it out faster. So we'll pick the on form submission. This adds the form trigger to my canvas. Okay, so we don't need any authentication on it. The path itself, let's give it a nice uh, name like the 30 day AI sprint newsletter. All right, form sign to 30 day AI sprint newsletter. Okay, let's get a description in a little bit later. All right, so let's get the name because we'll need that for customer. Oh, and then we can say hi, name, that sort of thing is your name. Let's not worry about first name, last name, whatever they enter, either way, we'll use an expression to just get the first part of that. Placeholder, e.g. Nathan Automator. Let's make this required. And then let's also add an email type. It's also a required field. And we're going to want to respond when using a respond to webhook node, because we could just give them a response as soon as it's submitted. But with this, we can actually check that it was added to Customero and give the user feedback if it was successful or not. So let's do that. And then we'll use the response to web mode for the last step. Okay, let's quickly test this. Okay, we can't test it because we don't have the response to webhook attached. So while we're building, let's switch to former submitted and then we'll we'll add that feedback loop at the end. Okay, so what is the we'll say Mason, email, submit that. Okay, it's submitted. We've got it in here. I've got it in schema view. Perfect. Okay. So the next thing we're going to want to do is add this user to customer IO, but in customer IO, we want a user ID. So we're going to get the crypto node and generate a user ID. So let's generate a random stream. UID, we can call this ID. Great. Okay, we're going to forego the fancy camera for now because the Descript crashed and so I lost building out this. So to quickly go over it, we've got the UUID and then we need to create the customer in, customer IO. So we added that through here, added create and update a customer action. And in here, basically, we, if I run this, let's capture this. Oh, let's do a different email. So we have a unique one to run into customer IO because I already added Nathan Automator. Let's also pin this so we don't have to keep filling out the form. And then in here, I dragged and dropped this on here. So basically we've got the, the same ID there. I added email and I drag and dropped email in there. So that's creating the customer. If we run this, we go to customer IO. People, you can see I've added noise and automated two here with the same ID. Uh, yeah. And then we added another customer IO action to add that customer to a segment. I created a segment in here, create new segment. It was a manual type of segment because we want to use the API, which led me to this screen. The segment has an ID of 11. I copied that, pasted that in here, and again, just mapped in the user's ID. If we run this, we can see it was successful. I go over the people here. Let's see, view people list. We can see we've got Nathan Automator 2 in there. And then what I did next is these steps could fail. We want to know about that. We want to let the user know if they fail. So in both of them, I went into settings. On error, I changed to continue using error output, which added this error output. And then I added a Slack node to send message, so Slack, send message. 
and then the error output's going to be there, and I'm sending it to a user. I copied my own user ID to send in there, and I'm just sending a static message for now. If I get this message a few times, we can make it more advanced. And then the Slack messages by default already send a link to this workflow, include link to workflow, it's set by default. So I'll be able to open up the workflow and troubleshoot from there. And then if they're successfully added to the segment, we want to let the user know from the web form that it was all good. So I added the respond to webhook node, and now we're configuring that. So the respond with, we want to set to JSON. And if I go into the form trigger, when it's set to respond using the respond to webhook node, we get this little note that we need to have this as output data. So that's the form submitted text. So this is the text that will swap to the form. So you've been added to the newsletter. Great. So now let's try this. Let's save it. Let's unpin the data and let's test the whole thing. Okay, so the form, let's say my name is max plus test one at gmail.com. There's a, a new email. Okay, you've been added to the newsletter. So it ran, it went to here. Great, it's working. There was no error. Let's check in here. I've added, let's see what happened. Let's go in here. Nathan automated plus test one at Gmail. Perhaps customer IO. Perhaps customer IO doesn't allow that. Interesting. Let's try it with a different email and test that theory. Test workflow. John O. John at email.com. Let's submit that. Okay, that worked. Let's go back in people here. Okay. That's working. We see the segments there in newsletter subscribers. Okay, so the plus thing is not working in customer IO. What we could do is check for that now. It's been if node step. And if email, now let's go to chat GPT because we could do a plus, but I'm not sure if the URLs support pluses because if they don't we need to make sure that we're checking for the plus before the at symbol me a rejects in return string let's see because rejects is not something i know okay it's pretty simple and we should have a rejects matches this rejects See, it does not match this rejects because. Okay, because it's a good email. Now let's quickly edit this and test it plus test with the other case. Let's go to the false branch. Perfect. Okay, here, we'll connect that to there. And here we want to respond to the page and try again. Okay. So now, save this, let's unpin this. Let's also duplicate this because we need to add an error after the Slack message because here then the users won't get one if we don't add that. And this is a generic error. I'm not sure exactly, at least for now, we won't build that out. If we get more errors, we could add a, a switch node here and check that or, or check for different conditions and give users more feedback for now. The form. Max has been notified. Okay, so let's save this. Let's test this, Nathan, and then let's test Max plus one at email.com. You've been added to the newsletter. Okay, why did that work? Maybe. It's not working for numbers, so let's test that again. Something and then max plus text at email.com. Okay, that's still working. Let's test if we got our logic wrong. If this doesn't work, there's a problem. Okay, we flipped it. So let's just flip this. Matches rejects. Now, all right test the workflow, we should have a working one. Let's say 
max plus ten at email dot it was a problem. Okay, great. And this refresh isn't working because we're testing. So it's a live form that would work, but we are gonna have to click that button again when we want to test. Okay, we've got the workflow working. I'm gonna save it and let's see what we do next. Let's let's delete the demo data. Because I've got my workflow, it's working. We activated it. So I can take the production URL. Uh, it's live, it's working. So we can post this to Twitter. We'll post the tweet in a second here. And then also, uh, I forgot to record, but we've updated the project because all of these projects I'm going to be working on, the Notion file for the project, everything in there should be able to let you know about the project, how to duplicate it. So yeah, we've got this first workflow done here. There's the JSON for the workflow, some screenshots. And what I'm going to do for now is we're going to launch this just on Twitter. I might post it to LinkedIn as well so you can sign up for the newsletter. But what we'll do in classic triaging is let's see how many people sign up for this because the first email is going to go out on Friday and I'm pretty confident I can build that in less than a day. So let's maybe pick up this project on Wednesday or Thursday. Let's see how many people signed up to understand how much effort we put into the first one.